Before we get started on this portion of the project, you should have already finished out the mystery hand, the bomb with the moving wick, and the upper portion of our baseball pitcher. We're going to focus now on the bottom portion of the baseball pitcher and the final little explosion scene. Let's start on the easy part, which will be his right leg. Going down to the timeline, let's locate the right shin and unlock visibility for it. Let's also unlock visibility for the right thigh as well. So we're going to work on both of those. I'm going to lock down my hand back while I'm down here as well. As we've done with these before, we need to zoom in and focus just on these. And you can see it's two different parts that we're going to work on. Simply because they're connected together, it's easier to work on them at the same time. Let's go back to frame 161. This will be our starting point. And we need to insert keyframes for all of the major movements that he moves through. Now the best part about this is that there's no major changes between the shape of it. So all we're doing is creating our keyframes from start to finish. So on my timeline you can see I've got keyframes for both the right shin and his right thigh. And we're going to be working on both of these at the same time and then later on adding their tweens in between each one of those. Now let's go back and reposition the thigh and the shin wherever they need to be. Now let's go in and add our motion tweens between all of these. Selecting the first one through the second to last one. We'll insert our classic tween between those and do the same thing for the thigh. Then we can go back and let's step forward to make sure everything matches up nicely. I can see there is one little bit right here where it does get off. So we need to make sure that it does stay in position as it moves forward. And if that's the case, if you've got one area that does get off or more, then let's go through and reposition it until it does show up correctly. Alright, with new keyframes added to adjust for the incorrect one, let's turn back on our looping, set it between just those keyframes that we need, and let's play through and test it. So far that's looking really good. Also while we're down here, let's go ahead and turn on visibility for our rightmost foot. The foot it's not going to move, so we don't have to do anything to it, but we do want to keep it visible so we can see how this is working. Now let's focus on the left foot. We'll go down to our timeline and let's locate the left thigh and work on that left thigh first. With visibility turned on, we can bring it in. We'll go down to frame 161 and let's step through and add all of our keyframes. Now that we've set up our keyframes, have a look at the shape of the thigh at the beginning and the thigh at the end. It may look very similar, but at some point it will change up significantly enough where we're going to have to redraw a second thigh. So keep that in mind as you're repositioning this. This should happen around frame 175. But as we've done before, we can go back to our original frame of 161 and let's start to reposition the thigh as necessary. Now that we're on frame 175, I'm going to step forward to frame 176 and insert a new keyframe because this is where I want to start to redraw a new shape for my thigh. With that done, let's break apart our current little symbol that we have. So I'm going to right click on it and choose break apart. This will turn it into a solid object and let's break it apart one more time. This will turn it into an object that we can edit and add on to. Notice that the thigh is made up of two, technically three different parts. You've got the line at the top, you've got a gray area in the middle, and you've also got a line at the bottom. Essentially, we want to be able to keep this gray area so that it fills in and overlaps with all the other shapes, but we need to change the shape of it and also change the line moving forward. 
So to do this, I'm going to choose my brush tool and you can really use whatever brush tool that you're uh, most comfortable with. In my case, I'm just going to use the regular paint brush tool. With that tool selected, we'll go over to our properties panel. I'm going to set my stroke color to be just solid black. I'm going to make sure object drawing mode is unchecked. I'm going to set my stroke size to be about three. Also, I'm going to change my profile to be this tapered profile. Uh, let's do this third tapered profile from here. So when I paint, it gives me that nice tapered edge. The only thing that we need to add to this is we need to round off the back of his thigh just slightly and also give a better profile to the knee because as it starts to bend, we want to connect the shin to it a little bit better. So all I'm going to do is click and drag and just add a simple little line that connects it forward a bit. And let's do a simple line that connects back a little bit more. Maybe even curve it off. There we go. And then the simple line connecting here, going down just a bit more. With that done, you can swap over to your black arrow selection tool and carefully click on the edge of the gray to bend it out and to bring it up into that position as well. So this is gonna give a better profile for the side of his leg. Now, if you want, you can always go back and you can try to, uh, to fix this up and have it look however you wish. Once we've done this, we need to save this as a separate symbol. And this is very important to remember. So with that done, I'm gonna select everything that's on here now, all the different parts that we just drew off. And let's right click on it and choose convert to symbol. We're gonna call this the new thigh. We don't need any advanced. Make sure it's a graphic, it's got center registration, and we'll say okay to that. Moving forward, we need to use this new thigh on all of our new frames that we created. So I'm going to step forward and make sure to delete away all of the old thighs that were there because we want to use this new one for all of the future, uh, future frames as well. So with that selected, we'll copy it, move forward to the next keyframe. Of course, we need to replace it. Let's go up to edit and paste in place. And then we need to rotate it up into position as well. Now, one thing I want to point out as I work through this is that not only am I rotating it, I'm also distorting it and skewing it. So I'm clicking in between each of the little key handles in order to nudge it into place. That may not be obvious from what I'm doing or seeing on here, but that's how I'm getting that good distortion. In addition to rotation, you also need to skew the object. With all of that done, now let's go down and add our motion tweens. Remember, we've got two different icons or two different symbols that we're tweening. So let's do a motion tween between these first ones all the way up to frame 175. So selecting those and create a classic tween. Then by here, it swaps over to our new symbol and we can create a motion tween between these last few frames as well, creating a classic tween for all of those. Now let's play through and test it. So far, so good. Let's see if we can match that shin up to meet the upper portion of the thigh. We'll go down to our timeline, lock down your thigh for the left and locate the left shin. And let's unlock this one. As we've done before, let's go down to frame 161. We'll pull this into view as well. And let's step through and add all of our different keyframes. Now let's return to frame 161 and step forward in making sure that the shin makes good connection with both the foot and the knee as we move forward. Now when we do this, of course, the first frame is okay. We want to nudge it forward and most of the transformations I'm going to be doing are going to be simple skewing. So I'm going to click in between both of these and drag it back into position. If it also helps, you can turn on visibility for your left foot at this particular time. Now that foot's gonna change up, but I'm gonna keep it the same for now. So we'll move forward. In this case, we need to nudge it over again, putting it into position, and then to either rotate back into position or you can skew it just slightly as needed. Moving forward. 
rotate, and skew. Repeat this process until you get good results for each of the different each of the different keyframes. And we'll pause right here. Don't be fooled as it moves forward. That foot isn't actually going to stay on the ground. You can see how it's starting to pick up. So I'm going to back up one because I made a mistake on this last keyframe and that I stretched out my shin when it shouldn't have been stretched out. So I'm going to hold down Option and bring that back up. Pay attention to the rough animation and not the actual drawing. So as I move forward, you can see how it picks up and moves along with it as it starts to elongate. And again, we want to make sure it has good contact with the knee, but is also rotated and is in the proper position as it, uh, as it animates forward through this. Rotate, put it into position there. Last few frames. Again, makes contact with the knee looks natural, but also goes into position here, and then do the final frame. And into position there. All right, let's do our classic tweens between all of these. So selecting those, right click. Now let's go back and make sure that it makes good contact with each of the in-betweens between both of those, we'll back up. Stepping forward through each one, so far so good. As it picks up, you can see it's getting off right about here. This is where it transitions. So I'm gonna go in and insert a new keyframe there. Let's go into our shin, I'll zoom in for it. And let's reposition it where it needs to be. In that case, I'm going to scooch it down just a bit more. Now between those two, picks up. It's off by this one, so we'll go in and insert one more keyframe there. And we'll nudge it over. And kind of back in position there. So between this one and this one. I think this one's off by just a bit. We'll nudge it over, and it goes up into position for all of those. Let's back out and see the whole thing. We'll play through. Great. So now our legs are set up and looking good. Let's focus on getting that leftmost foot. We'll go down to our timeline. Let's unlock that left foot. We'll lock down our left and right, excuse me, left shin and left thigh as well, but make sure we're working on that foot layer. And we're turning back to frame 161. When we step forward through these, you can see the foot doesn't necessarily make any movements for the first few frames. It's really only until frame 170, right there, 173, does it actually pick up. So I'm going to start on frame 171 and insert a keyframe there, then step forward every two frames and add our keyframes from this point all the way to the very end. So keyframe, keyframe, keyframe. all to frame 183, because that's where our, most of our movement is. Now we can go back to here, and then step forward and do all of our transformations to make it connect with the bottom of your shin. All right, now let's throw on a motion twine. With that done, let's go down to our timeline, and let's add a motion tween between all of those keyframes can then return to our original keyframe and step forward to make sure all of the contacts look correct. And this one is off by just a bit, so let's insert a keyframe for this one, hit F6, and then go back and readjust as necessary. Of course, yours may be slightly different from what I have, but everything seems to be moving into place. Let's back out and see the whole thing, and then play through. Excellent. And with that, it looks like the entire baseball picture has now been animated. 
The final thing we want to focus on is the explosion at the very end. And if you're following along in the book, uh, this is simply known as the payoff. So to do this, let's go to frame roughly 218 is where that explosion is going to begin. And we'll scroll to the very, very top of our timeline. Now we want this explosion to cover up everything that's in the frame. So go into our timeline, after we scroll to the very, very top, I'm going to close out my cleanup and add another layer that's on top of this. And we'll call this the explosion. On this explosion layer, let's go down and locate the keyframe where the explosion starts, which will be frame one, or excuse me, 218. And let's insert a keyframe at frame 218. And from here, let's draw off the explosion. Now here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to zoom all the way out so I can see all of everything that makes up this particular frame. You can see how it goes way beyond the border edges. That's what we want. Then I'm going to use just my regular brush tool or the classic brush tool. With that selected, let's go over to our tool properties and we want to alternate between some light and dark yellows, oranges, and reds. So the colors that we're going to choose, I'm just going to keep them within this particular color palette. So we've got a yellow, we've got an orange, and we've got a little red that we can use. Starting off with any one of those that you want. I'm just going to choose the yellow for now. I'm going to turn object drawing mode off, so make sure it's not selected. But I want to change my brush mode to paint behind. You'll see why in just a second. But doing this will allow us to paint all of the layers, building them from the foremost one in the middle all the way to the back. So change that to paint behind. If you want, you can also change the style of your brush. So this will give you a little bit better way of making some of these edges. I'm going to change mine over to something like one of these calligraphic ones. I like this one. And the size of it really depends on what you are comfortable with or how you want to paint it. In my case, I think around 20 to 25 is okay for this one. I've also set my smoothing pretty high up to 100%. That's okay with this. All we want to do now is go through and paint on some explosion little bits as it blows outward. If you want, you can also change up the tip of your brush as well, so it doesn't have to stay the same. But the main thing is we just want to be able to kind of rough in the way the explosion looks. It doesn't have to look perfect. Once you've done the middle portion of one, go back and change your color to another color. In this case, I'm going to alternate to yellow. And because we're painting with paint behind mode, when I go to paint the next section, you can see how it automatically is placed behind everything that's in there. And that's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to not paint over what we painted in the middle before, but we also want to be able to quickly and easily fill in everything that's there. So take some time, go through and paint on each individual part, but have it fill in behind what you're working on. It's also very important to note, and I'll say it again, make sure object drawing mode is turned off. For this next part, we want to be able to fill in and change the colors. But for now, all I'm going to do is focus on filling in and drawing off each part of the little explosion. Now let's turn this explosion little thing that we've created into its own symbol. Clicking on the little keyframe, this will select everything that's inside of it. With everything selected, let's right click on this and choose Convert to Symbol. With that selected, we'll call this the explosion. Make sure the type is a graphic with center registration and we'll say OK to this. Now with that done, let's double click on our new explosion symbol and this will take us into its own individual timeline. We want to have each of these colors alternating and to repaint off each one and uh, do this over and over for about four different frames. 
So if we go down to our timeline, we can see our first keyframe is already made. Let's create a new keyframe, F6, and then let's delete away everything that's here. Now as I paint it again, I want to alternate the colors. You can see in the first one I started off with orange, yellow, red, orange, yellow. Maybe this next one I'll start off with a different color. So I'll start off, grab my paintbrush. Instead of orange, I've already got red loaded up. So I'll go back in and I'll paint in the same thing, but with starting off with a red color. From here, since my next color was yellow, I don't want to choose yellow. Choose my brush tool again. Eh, let's see, I got the right one. So instead of yellow, maybe I'll choose orange. Whoops, had it selected. Make sure to deselect before you do that. Going back up here. Instead of yellow, we've got orange. And then we'll go through and we'll repaint this on as well. Repeat this process to repaint the second keyframe in here as well. All right, with a second frame created, you can see how it's going to alternate between both of those. Let's do the same thing two more times. Create a third keyframe. We'll hit F6. Delete away everything that's there. Then go through and repaint all of the explosions, alternating the colors. In this case, since I started off with red and orange, I'm going to start off with yellow now as my central one, and then alternate the colors going outward from there. With this part done, you can now see I've got four frames, and each one of those frames has a different little color explosion inside of it. And if we loop through each of these frames, we can turn on looping and set it for all of them. You can see how it'll give you an idea of what the explosion will look like. Now that we're done editing the symbol, let's go back up to scene one. And going down to our timeline, we want to have this exploding symbol slowly fade out over time. So you can see by around frame 228, the rough animation disappears. So let's insert a keyframe at frame 228. We'll hit F6. And then let's advance forward a few more frames, we'll say till frame 235. And we'll insert another keyframe here. Now at frame 235, we want it to be completely vanished. So clicking on your little symbol, let's go to the Properties panel, and under the Object, let's do a color effect. In this case, we want to change the alpha of it. The alpha is the brightness, or excuse me, the transparency of it. And let's bring the alpha all the way down to zero. So if you're following along in the timeline, it'll start here. By this keyframe on frame 228, it's going to start to fade out. So let's insert a classic tween. And you can see how it's going to fade out that to nothing. And this will reveal our exploded baseball pitcher. Now in order to see it, we need to get rid of our explosion. So I'm going to insert one more keyframe right here at the end. And with everything selected, we're going to delete it away so that it stops right there at that end. Now to show the baseball picture, here's what we want to do. I'm going to turn off visibility of this, and you can see by our rough animation, it's the baseball pitcher in his last pose, but they've redrawn over him to have tattered uh, uniform and parts of him are blown off, and it just kind of looks nice and funny. To do this, we're going to redraw the entire picture back in this position. So I'm going to go down to my timeline, and on the cleanup layer, we're going to create a new layer on top of it, but below the explosion layer. We're going to call this the Boom Pitcher Layer. Now, to not avoid or not to draw my explosion layer, I'm going to turn off visibility for it, and I'm going to lock it down just to be on the safe side. Make sure Boom Pitcher is selected. Now, to draw on top of it, for now, we're going to insert a keyframe right here at about 240. And we're going to use our drawing tools to redraw off everything from here. Later on, we're going to move it into position on the timeline, but it works best to draw it off from here. 
Now you can use any of the drawing tools that you're comfortable with, as long as the color and the relative outline look about the same. What I would recommend doing is drawing the black outline around everything first, then going in and fill in everything with the appropriate color uh, that you need. Now I forgot to mention in my settings, whenever I chose my brush, make sure that object drawing mode is turned off. When you make your lines, you want to be able to select them and have the little dots appear on the inside of it and not have a blue box around it. You want to do that because the next part of filling in the colors is going to happen using your paint bucket tool. This paint bucket tool will only detect the edges if it's inside of a normal drawn object and will not work if you've got object drawing mode turned on. So with that done, I've got my paint bucket selected. You can go over to your fill colors and you can see all of the colors that were used in the different shapes are down here at the very bottom. So for instance, if I needed to fill in his skin tone, I can select the skin tone, let's zoom into it, and carefully click on an area that we know is going to have just this skin tone. Here we are here. Now if you click on the inside of it and nothing's happening, it's not filling it in, the next thing to check out is going to be the gap size that you have. If you want, you can tell it to close large gaps and with that selected, when you click on the inside of it, it should start to fill in more areas. Just be aware that there still may be some areas that you'll have to carefully click inside of in order for it to recognize where that is. Take this one part at a time. Now if worse comes to worse, you can always use swap over to a brush tool and paint in the exact color right where you need it to be. For instance, on his glove, I know this area needs to be white and maybe a few areas up here where his fingers are. So to fill that in, I'm going to choose my regular classic brush. I've got my fill color already set and I'm going to set my brush mode to be paint behind. This way it'll paint behind the area that I'm working in. Also with that done, I can change up the size of my brush. In this case, I'm using my bracket keys next to the P in order to change the size of the brush. Now when I click and paint inside of this area, you can see that it's going to add that part behind the area that I'm working on. So take your time, carefully paint in what you need, and let Illustrator or, an, or Animate illustrate the parts that you want. With that done, the last thing we want to add are just some scorch marks to the outside area to make it look like the bomb has exploded and left some residue across his body. Now to do this, I'm going to choose my regular classic brush tool Going over to the tool options, still with object dr drawing mode unselected, let's change our brush mode to paint fills. With paint fills selected, this will allow you to paint inside of the area without affecting the black outlines that we have. As far as setting the color, let's choose one of these darker grays so that it'll show up nicely. So this one right here is okay. And make sure your opacity is set to 100%. If you want, you can also change the profile of your brush to something a little bit more jagged, and you can adjust the size of your brush as necessary. I'm going to make mine just slightly larger. Now let's zoom in on them. And we don't just want to put this in any random spot. We want to be able to place burn marks where it looks like it's coming from the center of the ball. So if this happened, it would go right here across the face. And you can see when it does this, it may take a couple of moments for it to render out and to go through, but to give it some time. And after a while, you can see little parts show up. We'll do some across the body and also on his leg. All right, I forgot to record myself actually working through the different parts, but you get the idea of the effect that we're trying to achieve. If you want, you can also use your book as a reference for how this layer should look. Once you got something you're satisfied with, now let's reposition his starting point on the timeline. So selecting that keyframe at 240, 
we want to drag it until it starts at frame 218. So click and drag it over to this position. Now, if your computer runs a little slow, that's totally normal, simply because it's having to render a lot at this point. But that'll restart the starting point for this one. The final thing we need to do is to turn off visibility for our regular picture. So let's go back down to our timeline. We'll turn on visibility for our explosion, and let's lock down our boom picture and open up our cleanup layer. Going through each of the different layers on the cleanup, simply go down on frame 218 and let's insert a blank keyframe here, meaning that we want to stop any visibility at this point. So right click on it and choose insert blank keyframe. This is also F7 if you wanted the keyboard shortcut. And repeat this process for each individual part, selecting each one, going down and inserting a blank keyframe just to, to get all of them. Also, we're, we're at the bottom of our timeline. Let's open up our rough animation folder and right click on the rough animation layer. Let's turn this layer into a guide layer. This way it won't play whenever we do our testing of our movie. From here now, let's go up to control and test the movie and see what we've got. Hand comes in, swipes the ball and replaces. The wick burns down as he winds up to pitch, then explosion, then it goes back to this. From here, we can also tweak the timing of everything that's being done. One of the things that the book suggests is, suggests is that he had a little bit of a nod as if he's agreeing to the pitch just before he winds up. This will help break up some of the dead time in between for this one. I'm not going to require it, but if you want, you can add that to there as well. Once you're satisfied with everything that's been done, you can go up to File and make sure you save your document. Be sure to add your name to the beginning of it and save it as an animate file format. This is what you'll upload to Moodle page for this project grade.